In this episode of Sound Design Basics, we're going into what stereo is and how to capture stereo sound. So what is stereo? Well, it's pretty simple. Stereo is having two channels of audio as opposed to mono, which is a single channel of audio. In a stereo recording, each channel goes to one of two speakers or drivers, allowing your ears to hear two entirely unique signals. With mono, one signal would be sent to both speakers or drivers. Since our brain uses subtle differences in sound between our two ears to determine direction, having a stereo recording allows that recorded audio to have a sense of directionality, which is the primary use of stereo recording, particularly for sound design. Our brain uses three factors to determine directionality, which we can artificially replicate to give our stereo recordings width. I'll go more into these factors in part two of this video, which will cover how to mix stereo with, but you need to know these factors for the rest of the video to make sense. Those three factors are volume, time, and frequency. The first factor, volume, is very straightforward. If a sound is to our right, it will be louder when it hits our right ear. Therefore, if a sounder is louder on one side, our brain will interpret the sound as being on that side. If a sound is on one side of the head, it will also take longer to reach one ear than the other. A sound on your right will be slightly delayed hitting your left ear. Typically, that's only a few milliseconds of time, but that's enough that our brain can detect it and use that to determine direction. The last factor, frequency, is slightly more complicated and a lot less frequently mentioned, but if a sound is on one side, some of the sound's upper or higher frequencies will be absorbed as the sound travels around your head. A sound coming from the right will be slightly duller on the left side, and again, our brain can process that to determine direction. Okay, so now that we understand what stereo width is and how our brain interprets stereo information, we need to quickly cover correlation and mono compatibility. When recording and mixing a stereo signal, you have to consider that even though you have two entirely distinct audio signals, those signals may be combined. This can happen if your audio is played back on a mono speaker like a low-end phone or television speakers. It can also happen when your audio is played back through stereo speakers as some of the sound from the right speaker will reach your left ear and vice versa. This is referred to as interchannel crosstalk. Two stereo signals can interfere with each other, causing something called phase cancellation or comb filtering. Basically, when you have two identical signals, but one is slightly delayed, it can cancel out certain frequencies in the other signal. We can measure whether this will happen with what's known as a correlation meter, which you can see on the screen. As you can see, the meter is completely at plus one, which means it's measuring a mono signal. The two stereo sides are identical. That's because it's measuring my voice. But if I put the meter on the background music, you'll see it starts hovering between zero and one. This means the two signals are similar or correlated, but not identical. If the meter is sitting at zero, that means the two signals are completely unique and share no similarities. If the signal is at negative one, that means one signal is phase inverted. If combined, these two signals will completely cancel each other out. You never really want a recording to be between zero and negative one on a correlation meter, as it means the signal is not mono compatible. Generally between 0.5 and one is the safest place to be. Okay, so now that we've got all that information, let's back up and actually pull out some microphones and record audio. Uh, for this video, I'm using a pair of Rode M5 microphones, which are a matched pair of small diaphragm condenser mics. This type of microphone is very popular for a stereo recording of ensembles like choirs and orchestras. There are three primary ways to position microphones for stereo recording. They are coincident, near coincident, and spaced. Each technique is a trade-off between stereo width and mono compatibility. Let's start with coincident. With this technique, the two microphones will be right on top of each other and pointed apart. You don't want the two mics touching, but they should be as close as possible. Because the two microphones are so close, there won't be any time difference, which means the stereo signal will be totally mono compatible. The stereo width will be created by a difference in volume, as the two mics are directional and are pointing different ways. This means that a coincident pair is always completely safe, but it also won't sound as wide as other techniques. A common form of a coincident pair is XY, which has the two microphones angled 90 degrees apart from one another. The second technique, near coincident, is fairly similar to a coincident pair, however, like the name suggests, rather than coinciding, the microphones are separated. Typically, they'll be about six to nine inches apart and angled away. This will give you more stereo width since you now have a time difference between the two mics, but it also creates the potential for phase interference. The farther apart, the mics are, the wider the sound will be, but the higher the potential for mono incompatibility as well, so it's important to be careful when using this technique. 
A common form of near coincident is ortif, which has the microphones six and a half inches apart and angled 110 degrees apart. The last technique, spaced pair, is similar to a near coincident pair, but the microphones are pointed the same direction and usually are spaced farther apart. Often this is done with omnidirectional microphones rather than the directional ones I'm using, but either type does work. Spaced pair recordings solve a problem known as hole in the middle, which can happen when you angle microphones apart. Since neither microphone is pointing towards the center of what you're recording, the middle can sound duller and quieter. Near coincident pairs can fix this by moving farther away from the sound source, but if that's not an option, then a spaced pair is often a better choice. Because of the time difference between the microphones, mono compatibility is often an issue with spaced pairs, so again, be careful. Typically, a spaced pair has microphones at least 12 to 18 inches apart. Okay, so now that we know how to record stereo, let's do some listening and hear the different techniques. While stereo recording is very common in the music world, most of the time you'll record in mono when shooting projects like film or podcasts. One area where stereo recording is prevalent is for capturing ambient sound. So here are three examples of natural ambient sound. Listen for the directionality of some of the different elements you can see on screen and where they're coming from uh, as far as your hearing. So each technique will start in stereo and then it will go to mono so you can hear what the mono combination sounds like. All right, anyway, that is it for this video. So if you like this video, hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And if you wanna see some of the equipment that I used in this video, check it out in the description down below as well. And if you wanna see more videos like this, including the upcoming sequel to this video where we'll talk about how you can use stereo techniques when you're mixing, hit that subscribe button.